worshipping at the Deeper Life Bible Church on Sunday is such an exciting and enriching experience that no one will want to miss. And in this case, you will be made part of this happy and heaven-bound congregation as you listen to the message. You will never be the same again. Happy listening and God bless you.
will be written on the wall. Till your heart of God, writing on the wall, till the hand of God, writing on the wall, shall the river be forgotten, or shall it be untrusted? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the worship service today. We are grateful for all that you have taught us since the beginning of the service. We praise your name for the truth that sets free. And we thank you, Lord, because of the illumination by the Spirit of God on the world. Thank you, Lord, because of the assurance we have that we are being taught the truth of the Word of God. And we know that it is the truth that will make us free and keep us free. We pray, O Lord, that as we come before your word now, we'll come reverently, accepting, believing everything that you will speak to us in the word. And we pray, O Lord, that the way you want us to walk, the way you want us to go, is the way we'll walk and go, so that your name will be glorified in our lives. Father, we pray that your spirit will take these words and quicken them in our inner man, so that our lives will be at the point it ought to be, living to the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's open our Bibles together to Matthew chapter 3, from verse 7 through to verse 10. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you, that God is able of these souls to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Here we have John the Baptist, the messenger of the Lord, the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ whom the Father sent to declare the truth to the children of Israel before the coming of his only begotten Son. We have been here talking to the people concerning the wrath of God, the judgment of God. He spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and to all the people that came to his baptism. And he was telling them this, that they shouldn't have a kind of hope which is not based on the word of God and that they shouldn't think that just because they refer to themselves as the children of Abraham that their sins will be glossed over or that their sins will not be judged he assured them that if they failed God and if they stepped away from the place where God wanted them to be that God could replace them with gentle stones that God could raise up children unto Abraham out of these stones. Then he told them in conclusion in verse 10 that the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. 
and he said every tree. Note it, mark it, important. Every tree which bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down, cast into the fire. The tree may be tall, the tree may be big, the tree may have deep roots, the tree may have beautiful leaves, the tree might have been there so many years, and the tree might look significant in the forest, yet every tree, which bringeth forth not good fruit, is hewn down and shall be cast into the fire. Today we want to think very seriously on how to escape the judgment of God. So the title of the message is Escaping God's Judgment. Escaping God's Judgment. Experience in life points to the expectation in the immediate future and the distant future. I refer to immediate future as a future here on earth. I refer to the distant future as what happens beyond the grave, beyond the point of death, in the distant future. I said experience in life points to the expectation in the immediate future here in the world and in the distant future in the great beyond. You see, even in this world where we are, Righteousness will be rewarded by God. By God. He will set things in motion. And He will make sure that righteousness is rewarded. That's what Jesus said. That the people that have followed Him in this evil generation, that of all the things they have given up, He will multiply by a hundred. He will reward them. Righteousness is profitable in this world and in the world to come. Not only that, sin. Whether that sin is open, public or hidden, will be punished. And it is so in this world. And it will be so also in the world to come. You have seen from a search the scripture today. You have seen how Moses, that great man of God, warned the children of Israel. On the one side, he said some of the tribes. On the other side, on the other mountain, he said some other tribes of the children of Israel. And the curses were read out and then the blessings were read out and then the children of Israel were all in unison to say Amen to both the judgments of God and to the blessings and the reward of righteousness the same thing we learn that as it happens in this world that righteousness will be rewarded and sin on righteousness will be punished even so is it in the distant future in the great beyond beyond the grave that righteousness will be rewarded and sin will be punished. Listen to this. Biblical history and secular history both point to the reality and the fact of judgment against sin and against evil. Judgment on earth could be terrible, sometimes unbearable. Yet, understand this. That judgment after death is indescribably greater and more fiery than any torment or torture or suffering here on earth. It should be then your concern and my concern. It should be the concern of everyone that we should know the way of escape out of the judgment of God. For clarity, we we'll consider three points. Number one, judgment against sin. Judgment against sin. I'm sure you are writing down some things. Number two, the way of escape. Number two, the way of escape. Number three, inheriting the blessings. Inheriting the promises. Inheriting the goodness, the kindness, and all the things that God has promised to the people of God. Go back to point one. Judgment against sin. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 21. Proverbs 11, verse 21. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Here the Lord is warning the children of men. And he says, hands may be joined in hand. Yet the sinner, yet the wicked, shall be 
definitely punished. He will not go scot free. He will not be able to escape the judgment of God. That the wicked shall not be unpunished. He's telling us something. You know, there are times when a wicked man will join hands, will join in agreement, will be in contract, or will be in deep, intimate relationship with men of power, men of political power, men of military power, men of great wealth, and men of great influence. And the wicked will think that because he has joined hands with influential people, wealthy people, rich people, that because of that, his sin will not be noticed. His sin will not be punished. There are times that a woman will join hands with a false prophet, with a dreamer, with a person that says he has revelation. And he thinks that because he has joined hands, he has been in agreement with a false prophet or any other kind of prophet. That therefore our sin, our evil doing, will not be noticed by God. Listen to this, though hand join in hand. Whoever you are in agreement with, whoever you are agreeing with, whoever you are staying under is cover. The wicked, the sinner, shall not be unpunished. That means the sinner will be punished for the sins they commit. The backslider will be punished for the sins he has been committing. And the compromiser, the one who is neither in nor out, the one who is not fully in the light and not completely in darkness, the one who is not completely, totally committed unto the Lord and not totally committed to the world, the one that has one leg in the church and one leg in the world, the wicked, the sinner, the compromiser shall not go unpunished. That's the word of God. And it is very nice, very good to take it to heart to know that sin will always be punished. In Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 5 through to verse 6. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness which is idolatry. Listen to verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. When the Bible says in the passage I read to you before that the wicked shall not go unpunished, this is what it means. That the wicked, the fornicator, and those who are unclean, you know, being unclean, you may be unclean privately, messing up your life, living a dirty life, and misusing yourself privately with inordinate affection, with evil concupiscence, and with covetousness, that thing in your heart that whenever you see somebody with a better car than you have, Better clothing than you have. Better housing than you have. Better job than you have. Better position than you have. Covetousness rises up in your heart. And actually it is idolatry. You know why it's idolatry? Because you want that car more than you want God. Because you want that position more than you want God. Because you want that money more than you want God. Because you love that thing more than God, you make it your God. And because of that, covetousness is idolatry. And it says, it is because of this. It is because of the uncleanness, because of the fornication, because of the inordinate affection, because of the evil concupiscence, because of the covetousness, that the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. From verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5. From verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Let me clear up one point here. You see, there are some people that, not have, that do not have the knowledge of the truth. They say they are born again and they are still sinning. They say they are born again and they are still telling lies. 
they say they are born again and you see that there is covetousness in their heart, in their life, in their conduct, in their language. They say they are born again, uncleanness has not left them. It says, this is a life that becometh, that befeeds, say, that fornication will not be once named among you. There were so many converts in Ephesus. There were young people there, men there, women there. And yet, Paul the Apostle said, as many as they were, men and women, boys and girls, that among these children of God, fornication should not be once mentioned. Can you see the standard of the word of God then? That actually, whoever is called a child of God, a saint of God, fornication will not be in his life. And you know when somebody commits fornication or adultery, the church will discipline such an individual. And sometimes you have such individuals saying, after all, what have I done? Is it an unpardonable sin? Why can't they permit me to still continue among the people of God, even though I committed fornication? You see the word of God, let it not be once named among you as it becomes sin. Verse 4, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. Listen to me. We shouldn't become careless in our Christian lives. You know, sometimes when you have a group of people meeting together, it may be even a group of workers meeting together. The way they jest, the way they laugh, and the way they have foolish talking is unthinkable. Sometimes it may be in the marriage committee in the district. Sometimes it is among the members of the choir. Men and women, men, look up here. There are things you never say when women are around. A kind of language you never talk. There are some kinds of clothing for the women you never openly talk about or mention in your mouth when the women are around. That's the kind of language you never speak because it will become filthiness or foolish talking and you don't jest as children of God. How can you jest souls are dying around you? How can you jest many people are perishing around you? How can you be jesting and laughing, slapping one another and uh, patting one another, running after one another, r laughing so loud that people will think are those people really the people of God? Let us check our lives. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of time. You know, in the choir there should be discipline. There should be orderliness. There should be righteousness. There should be sobriety. There should be seriousness that will know that these are the people of God. Among the ushers, men and women, there should be discipline. There should be a serious, grave, weighty attitude. And of course, in the marriage committee, you know, it is very, very easy. While we are questioning people that came uh, to say, I've seen the will of God to so and so, we can turn it to jesting. We can turn it to laughter. We can turn it to asking some questions that eventually will not lead to godliness, but will lead into evil thinking, evil thoughts. Be very careful. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Verse 5. But this ye know, for this ye know, that no armonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and in the kingdom of God that no armonger that means no adulterer and no unclean person or covetous man who is an idol worshipper has any inheritance think about that because you see there are people that do not know that sinners are not in the kingdom of God Sinners don't have any claim on the promises of God. Backsliders, compromisers, have no inheritance, any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and in the kingdom of God. But says, let no man deceive you with vain words, with empty promises. For because of these things, 
cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And I just remind you that these are the things that are mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these. Adultery. Adultery. Have you ever thought about that? A person that has a wife at home and will want to go and marry another wife. Second wife. That's adultery. A person that will divorce his wife or divorce her husband and want to marry another. Jesus said that is adultery. And it says fornication. They call it boyfriend, girlfriend, fornication. And when a man becomes so intimate and so close with a lady, and yet they are not married, and we we'll we'll know about intimate, personal, private things in that lady's life. Oh, you are getting near it already. That's fornication. And uncleanness. That's tediousness. It talks of idolatry. And it talks of witchcraft. You know there are people that have witchcraft sorcery and they are injuring other people's businesses other people's lives other people's families and they operate with the powers of darkness and yet they go to church or maybe they come to church maybe some of them look at you there and it is it is noted that those who are in witchcraft that the person will be under the judgment of god it talks about hatred do you know there are some people, they don't greet the coordinator? Do you know there are some people, they don't greet a particular zonal leader or a particular woman rep? Do you know there are some people, oh, they say, I have nothing to do with brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so. Isn't that hatred? You know what the Bible says? It says, he that hated his brother in his heart, he does not have eternal life abiding in him. Variance. Emulation, wrong. When you see somebody that calls himself a Christian, see him get angry. See her get angry. See her clear up. See her use abusive language. And see her that dress other people down. And see her minimize, belittle other people. And see some of them that will cut down the zona leader, cut down the coordinator, cut down every leader, every worker. Look at that, wrong and strive and sedition and heresy you know what some people some of them say oh they say i will talk out my mind i will be angry and i will fight anybody after i fought all of them if i cannot stay in the church i go to another church you go to another church with hatred in your heart wrath in your heart strife in your life where are you going you can get to that other church but will not make heaven there is judgment against sin it says in verse 21, envy, envy, how many battles are fought because of envy. They made such and such a leader, they didn't make me a leader. We are jealous, we are envious, and envy, jealousy is a sin. They gave so and so a particular opportunity, a particular privilege that I should have been given to me. Envy is a sin. Murders, drunkenness, maybe you are drinking in secret, God knows it. God sees it. Every sin you commit goes on record in the presence, in the sight of God. And then it says, revelings and such life. Revelings, it may be gambling, maybe nightclub, maybe smoking and drinking, maybe using all these things of the world and such life, of the which I tell you before. As I have told you in time past, that they which commit such things, that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, there is judgment because of sin. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Listen, my friends and brothers and sisters. Life may look so long. But remember, Methuselah eventually died. I've told you that before. And the Bible says there's only a step between you and death. And therefore, we should be very careful the way we live. Do not sleep if there is sin in the heart, guilt on the earth. Settle it before you sleep. We don't know tomorrow. We don't know when a trumpet will sound. 
when the Lord will come, or when death will call, we will knock at the door and call any of us home. And yet we know it is appointed unto men once to die. But after this, the judgment, if a person dies in sin, if a person dies as a compromiser, as a backslider, where will he spend eternity? Look at chapter 10 of Hebrews. Chapter 10 of Hebrews. Chapter 10 of Hebrews. From verse 27. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries, those who are haters of God. You hate God? Or you hate righteousness? Or you hate the people that are directing you in the word of God? Maybe one of our leaders called you and said, Brother, Oh, sister, I've been thinking of talking to you. I've been thinking of counseling you, advising you. I've been thinking of just pointing out to you, look at this, look at this, look at this. Don't you know that you ought to live a better life according to the word of God? And you hate that leader. And you hate the person that rebukes your unrighteousness. It says the judgment and the fiery indignation will devour the adversary. Verse 28, he that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden down underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and unholy sin and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You see the judgment of God, the fiery indignation of God against sin. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Our God is a consuming fire. Is it possible to escape? If you have sinned, if you have gone astray, if you have come short of the glory of God, is there any way of escape that leads us to point to the way of escape? The way of escape in Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 7 and 8. At what instant? I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. That is the way of escape. Here God himself tells us his principle of dealing with Every man, every woman, every family, every church, every kingdom, every nation, every tribe. It says, at what instant I speak against a nation, against a group of people, because of their sin, because of their evil, to pluck down, to pluck up, to pull down, to destroy it. It said, if that nation, against whom I have pronounced, against whom I wanted to bring judgment, will turn from their evil. If they will repent, then I will change my mind, and I will not bring the evil upon them again that I thought I would do against them. So then, it is very important, if you want to escape the judgment of God, that you will turn from evil. You will turn from anything which is contrary to the word of God. Let's look at Jonah chapter 3. Jonah chapter 3. And I'm reading there from verse 3. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Let me just remind you that Jonah himself was a forgiven backslider. Do you notice that? He came, he, he went away from the Lord. 
He ran away from the presence of God. He entered into a ship. And there was a mighty storm, a mighty tempest. And their lives were in danger. They began to throw their property into the sea. And yet the sea was still exceedingly uh, tempestuous. So that they were afraid of their lives. But eventually, after they had thrown this man into the sea, and the fish swallowed him up, and he could have gone from that place of disobedience right into the grave. That fish could not, would not have vomited him out, but then right in the belly of that sheep, of that fish, he repented. And God had mercy. Can you see that? That no matter how far a man or a woman has run away from God, no matter how deep a person might have gone in sin, no matter how wayward an individual might have been, and no matter how the judgment of God already has started falling, if that person will begin to pray, if that person will begin to make a vow before the Lord, if that person will begin to say, Oh Lord, I am sorry that I will forsake my evil way. Can you see that repentance will bring the favor, the grace, the love, the peace of God back into that person's life? And so he received mercy. He now went through Nineveh. Three days journey. And he said, Yet forty days, death has been decreed and determined in the court of heaven that Nineveh shall be destroyed. Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Verse 8 But let man and beasts be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God, yea, let them turn every one from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Here the people of Nineveh, in agreement with their leader, with their king, they saw that the only way of escape was repentance and turning away from evil. It is still the same today. That is still the way of escape. That if we want to be free, free from the judgment of God, escape the judgment of God, the only way of escape is if we realize our sin, and we turn away from the sin, and we do what is right in the sight of God. You know, Nineveh was a big city, a great city. And the Bible says in Jonah chapter 4 verse 11, should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, where there, wherein are more than six score thousand persons, more than one twenty thousand people, and they had such great wickedness. No doubt there was drinking, drunkenness there. No doubt violence and killing one another, destroying one another. No doubt gambling. No doubt adultery, fornication immorality, any kind of sin you can think about in a big city of the ancient times and of the modern times. And yet these people all together, they repented all at the same time. And they began to cry mightily unto the Lord. And they began to seek the face of the Lord. And because of that repentance, because of that calling upon the name of the Lord, God forgive them. Look at verse 10 of Jonah chapter 3. And God saw their works. What's that? He saw their humility. He saw their sincerity. He saw their repentance. He saw the genuineness of their turning away from evil. He saw their praying and calling upon the Lord. He saw their faith in God. They believed in God. God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. They turned completely from all their sins. And God repented of the evil that He had said that He would do unto them. And he did it not. And we turn to Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. From verse 11. Ezekiel 33 verse 11. Say unto them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and leave.
upon ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Here is the will of God. You see, the Bible tells us very pointedly and very clearly that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but that everyone should come to repentance. That's why it says very clearly the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long suffering and patient toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants everyone saved. You see, if anyone gets to hell, it will not be the fault of God. If anyone eventually dies in sin, dies as a backslider, dies as a compromiser, and goes to hell fire forever and ever, tortured, tormented, punished with the devil and his angels, that will not be the fault of God. You know why? He has made a way of escape. That if man, woman, will hear the word of God, realize his sin, realize he has committed sin and come short of the glory of God. Realize the great wickedness he has committed in the sight of God. Realize the sin in the heart, the sin in the life. Realize the waywardness, the mischief, the wickedness, the violence, the adultery, the fornication, and the unrighteousness in his life. And then he makes up his mind. He takes a decision and he turns from his evil ways. Then when he calls upon the name of the Lord like that and he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who has been sacrificed to take away all our sins. The Bible says he shall live. He shall not die. He will have life, eternal life from God. He will pass from death unto life. Look at it in Ezekiel 33 from verse 14. Ezekiel 33 from verse 14 Again When I say unto the wicked Thou shalt surely die Surely die Certainly die If he turn from his sin And do that which is lawful and right If the wicked restore the pledge, pledge Give again that he had robbed Walk in the statutes of life Without committing iniquity he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. He has done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Repentance is very important in the sight of God. And bringing forth fruits unto repentance, being righteous and holy and godly, is very important in the sight of God. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and will seek my face and will turn from their wicked, from their evil ways, then, and they will call upon the Lord. He says, I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. So then, the way of escape is to repent. And to now bind yourself unto the Lord. Commit, consecrate yourself to the Lord and say, I will never look back. I will never go the way of sin anymore. You become born again. You become a child of God. And then you inherit the promises of God. Your, names, your name will be written in the book of life in heaven. God will say, He is my child. He is my beloved. And then when you pray, God will answer. And God will be preparing a place for you in heaven. That brings us to the third point, inheriting the blessings. When you have become a child of God, guilt is gone, condemnation is gone, the heavy load is gone, the shame is gone, the reproach is gone, the darkness is gone, your attachment to the devil is broken, the power of sin is broken in your life, the penalty, the punishment of sin is removed, your name is written in the book of life. There is the witness of the Holy Spirit within you that you are a child of God. There is the joy of salvation that floods your soul, that all your sins are forgiven. You feel light, you feel clean, because all your sins, iniquities are blotted away. And God said, I have blotted, I have blotted away thine iniquity. And I've taken your sin out of you and I've put it in the depth of the sea and will never be remembered against you anymore. Then is the Spirit of God in your heart calling him Abba Father. 
he knows him to be your father. He knows you to be a son. He knows you to be a daughter. And then it says he gives you the name of Jesus. That whatever you ask in his name, he will grant unto you. Then he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. That in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And while he's preparing that place for you and you are here on earth, he says, whatever you will ask the Father in my name, I will grant it unto you. What a blessed privilege that you now inherit with Christ because you become an heir of God and a co-joint heir with Christ. The benefit of the people that know God. You now inherit the blessings. That's point three. Inheriting the blessings. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 9. But beloved, we have persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. It tells us that after you are saved, a lot of blessings accompany salvation in your life. Verse 12, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them, who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You inherit the promises because now you are born again. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, Set fast unto the end. Oh yes, there are blessings, inheritances, and promises awaiting the people of God. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21 from verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Rise, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that the thirst the, of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Here is the blessed hope of the believer. Verse 7, he that overcometh. There may be trials, he that overcometh. There may be persecution, he that overcometh. There may be the enticing of the devil to go back to the world, he that overcometh. There may be temptation, he that overcometh. There may be times of discouragement and distress, he that overcometh. The devil may try to deceive and lure you back to the world, he that overcometh. There may be some things that the worldly people are presenting to you and they are dangling before you saying, if you will take all these glories of the kingdoms of the world and go away from the Lord, you have many things in the world here. He that overcometh, you overcome temptation, you overcome sin, you overcome the tendency to look back and go away from the Lord. You know the Bible says, he that lays his hands on the plow and looketh back is no more fit for the kingdom of God. But if you overcome all those things, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. I want to be an overcomer. How about you? How about you? Don't you want to be an overcomer? Temptations are there. Trials are there. Persecutions are there. Difficulties are there. Distresses are there. A lot of dazzling things. Things that dazzle our eyes, they are there. But he that overcometh, be an overcomer. Rise up on your feet and say, Lord, make me an overcomer. Make me an overcomer. The world is trying to invite you back. You say, oh Lord, make me an overcomer. The flesh is trying to pull you down. Trying to drag you down. You say, oh Lord, make me an overcomer. And the devil is trying to make many promises to you, which you will never fulfill anyway. But you say, Lord, I will never yield. I will never yield. Make me an overcomer. Your husband is trying to drag you back to the world. Your wife is trying to drag you back to the world. Oh Lord, make me an overcomer. Discouragement is setting in in your heart, in your life. We don't know when the Lord will come. We don't know when the trumpet will sound. We don't know when we're going to leave this world and fly away. One glorious morning, we shall fly away. We shall leave all this place, all this uh, valley of the shadow of death, all this valley of trouble, valley of problems. Be an overcomer. 
Don't allow anything to hinder you and you say, Oh Lord, give me your grace, give me your strength, and give me your power, so that I will be an overcomer. He that overcometh, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. And God says, I will be your God. I'll be your God. I'll be your God. And he shall be my son, he shall be my daughter. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord that God will help you if you have not repented, repent of your sin. If you have become a compromiser, one leg in the church, one leg in the world, you tell the Lord, Oh Lord, help me and deliver me. Or if it says that you have gone away from the Lord, a backslider, complete backslider, you tell the Lord, I want to be an overcomer. Help me, help me, I want to be an overcomer. He will help you. He will help you. Turn away from sin and cry mightily unto the Lord. You will inherit the blessings of God here on earth, the blessings of God in the great beyond. You have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them.